good evening everybody. Michael Suiting here. It's a uh, day after Halloween and I thought we could talk about the leftover Halloween candy and some of the artifacts. Lots of decorating goes on around here on every holiday, including Halloween. So, uh, and we're pretty scary, too, around here sometimes, so. As you can see, a couple of the pumpkins back there, you know, uh, back behind me there. Um, there were more than that, but you can see two of them, Howling Wolf, and uh, the other one, Owl, you know. And a couple haunted houses that were around, but we have tons before I get to the candy. Um. We have tons of other Halloween artifacts. For example, this guy here. Let's see if you can see him, you know. Turn him around where you can see his face. A jack-o'-lantern hopping cat sort of guy. He's kind of kind of cool. Let's check out a gourd we've got down here. You know, things like this. This thing sort of makes a thump sound. Different gourds make different sounds. If I brought all of them over here, I think we probably have about eight or nine of them around here. Could probably play a tune, but that wouldn't quite be in the theme of our overall, you know, uh, Halloween theme. I better have to edit that out. Kind of banged it by accident. Here we got the, uh, what is this, just a ceramic sculpture, a ghosty face here, you know. Has anyone out there ever seen a ghost? I um, thought I had when I was young. But you know how, when you're young, you have quite an imagination, right? So, I don't know. Here we have the uh, Indian corn artifact here. I kind of like the sound. Has anybody else ever sat in like a field of dry grass that's tall and um, just listen to the wind going through it? It kind of reminds me, this here kind of reminds me of that. It's a soothing sound. You're laying out in a big field, and you hear this. I think you might go to sleep to it. I know I would drift off, you know, hearing this kind of sound. I hear wind rustling through something like this. So, I think these kinds of things make for a nice, soothing atmosphere. Let's see what else we have around here that would be in our theme tonight. How about this ornate pumpkin right here? This is like a colored glass, sort of like a stained glass. I'll hold it up close, you see the colors right there, see? So we have a variety of different kinds of pumpkins for the Halloween. Besides the one behind me, and uh, this would be another kind, of course. So here's another pumpkin type, sort of a beaded thing. Let's hold it up close. Maybe you can see some of the bead colors on there. Interesting, sort of, you know. Turn that around this way. Leaves. Sort of a harvesty effect. I wonder what this thing sounds like. That makes 
kind of a soothing sound there. We have a cockatiel, and they do this thing called beak grinding when they're relaxed and happy and ready to go to sleep. Sort of an ASMR thing. And it sounds a little bit like this when I'm scratching on this thing. Except they do it a little bit faster. It might be more like sort of like that, I think. So that's this uh, beaded pumpkin. And uh, what we're going to get into in a little bit is the sound of the Halloween candy that did not get eaten well, didn't get distributed. Not very much of it didn't get distributed. And we'll check out what we got left over. See, we got a big giant bowl here. See there? And that's the stuff that didn't get distributed right there. Of course the bowl gets refilled after you put some in, you know, everybody's bag, Halloween bag. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. First, we'll look at a few more of the Halloween artifact. I'm kind of tempted to eat one of these. You know, I used to I really love these malt balls when I was a kid. They're called Whoppers, you know, and they come in a big carton too, but um, they've made them smaller and smaller over the years. It's kind of ironic that they call it a Whopper because it's tiny now. You can barely see them when you get them out of the little package. So I had to put big handfuls in the kids' bags when they came around trick-or-treating, you know. By the way, do you think trick-or-treat is sort of like blackmail? I think it's a little bit like blackmail, but all the kids love it. When I was a kid, I'm not going to bore you with that story yet, but I I promise I will bore you later, put you to sleep. All right, what else we got here for artifacts? Here's another kind of pumpkin. The decorator around here likes really whimsical stuff. So this would fall into that category, I think, don't you? Whimsical stuff right there. A cat, black cat on top of this bouncing pumpkin face. He could be a little bit scary looking in a way, don't you think? And um, then of course we have our obligatory black cat. Got the little bell on it. So you know it's coming. Here's the black cat. I'll show you. Got a witch's hat on too, see? The black cat. A, kind of a scary face, you know, a little bit arched. This guy has bendable legs, so you can set him up wherever you want, you know. So we have that. Let's see what else. What else do we have? Well, this guy here was hanging from the ceiling, you know. Then they're on a black cat theme, right? And uh, got some tassels on it. It was hanging. And we got a similar one over here. I'll show you in just a moment. Find another one like this. Still got this candy here tempting me to drive my blood sugar up, which I'm not supposed to do. 
here's the other hanging one, you see. Got some little, I don't know, dingleberry down here or something. Kind of like a Chesser cat smile, don't you think? Look a little bit like that to me. The Chesser cat from Alice in Wonderland. Anyway, whimsical again, you know, you got the hat with the little, what is that? Stars and moons on there, right? You, you just don't want that looking at you up close when you wake up from a dream, that's all. You know, other than that, it's pretty good. This little ball is knocking on this big, giant, wooden candy bowl here. That's what that noise is right there. Do you like wind chimes? The wooden ones? I kind of like them. The bamboo. Maybe we'll listen to those sometime when there's a storm coming in. So here's a little thing that we lost the battery on, you know. But if we had the battery, his eyes would flash and stuff and he'd make scary sounds. That wouldn't be very soothing, so I don't mind we don't have the battery for him at this time. Uh, what else we got here before we get to our Halloween candy discussion? Here is a uh, like some kind of a witch going by on a broom. So once again, get the sound of the room on the back there. Kind of soothing, right? What else does have bats and stuff? Little bats and a pumpkin right there flying around. Okay, so flying around. Probably wanting to get the candy. I'm pretty sure I'm keep her out of there for now until I get what I want first. Back on kind of a seasonal theme, we have this, I don't know what you would call it, but I guess that would be like a centerpiece to a table, and it's got, you know, kind of harvesty stuff here, with grapes and fruit and fall color leaves on it, that kind of thing. I kind of like the sound of these. Not the clinking on the three-tiered um, display platter thing, but just the sound of these rubbing together. What are these supposed to be? They look like uh, the green grapes, but they're a little bit clear, aren't they? I, like I kind of like them. I don't know, that's just me. Just kind of like the, I like anything that sort of shiny object, you know. I guess I'm sort of like an easily amused bird or something. You know, shiny objects. Here's a guy that's kind of interesting. Uh, this this looks like some kind of a weird. I don't know if this is a pumpkin creature or. It can't be a witch, there's no broom. So it's just, maybe it's a ghosty with a pumpkin head. Maybe that's with a black cat riding on the back. Let me show you this up close here, see? Got the pumpkin head, got a couple bats down there, and then a black cat on top. So, um, still got the tag on it back here. So, what to say? So maybe. Maybe the tag will tell me what it is. This is a uh, coin and company, C O Y N E, Willie Ray Studio. Willie Ray Studio. So, doesn't say what it is though. 
maybe they make correctables or something. And this is one of the correctables. Guess that what that is. Put that down somewhere. So here we have um, some kind of strange you know, witch or something riding, I think, through the air probably on this interesting bike here. And she got a little pumpkin on the back there behind her. And she got, what is this in the basket in the front? Let's see if you can see. Oh, yeah. That looks like uh, a little bit like a, a blue meanie from the uh, Beatles' Yellow Submarine album. But I don't think that's really what that is. But, uh... Interesting way. She remind. See how she's got a stripe thing on top. Who's that guy that makes the uh, Halloween type movies? Like uh, I can't remember his name now. That director, you know, make them crazy movies. You guys will know, and you'll tell me that everything's stripy in his films. Here is a sign that was up. Halloween greetings, you know, up on the wall for uh, the pumpkins and stuff all over that. So you see, you think I'm showing you most of our decorations for Halloween, but the reality is I'm only showing you a small fraction, okay? So there's so much of it around here. Uh, what else we got? Hold on one second. Here's one right here. And another black cat theme, see? And it's got a little thing back here. This time, instead of the black cat riding on something, there's something riding on the black cat. And it makes a little noise, too. Right there. Got some kind of scarf on here. Nice. Keep it warm. Fall weather getting a little chilly now, don't you think? So keep the black cat warm. Put that scarf right there. Alright, so that's that one. Let's see what else we got. What I'm going to show you now is just a representation. It's one of many around here that we have. Little Halloween-y, you know, sort of graveyard-type scenes with characters in them and things. As you can see there. So we got a whole bunch around here. I see a little, I kind of like the little white ghost floating around. I gotta turn it where you can see him there. Little white ghosty guy coming out from uh, his grave thing there, coffin or whatever. Anyway, we never have a shortage of um, artifacts around here. going to show you next. Alright, I found another thing here. And I don't know if I can fit all of it in the frame. So we got the moon here, of course. Does the light shine through that? It kind of does. Yeah. Background light. Have you ever been at like say a yacht harbor on a boat and hear sounds like this though. It's like the lines and the connectors and things. I always find that a little bit soothing, sort of. But anyway, it's a little off topic, so I'm going to show you this thing. We're still going to get to the candy, I promise. 
We've got the pumpkin thing down here. Another little sort of graveyard scene, you know. An owl right there. We've got a wrought iron thing here. A gate. Okay, then we have some sort of whimsical. Just a pot and pan holder. Did you know there were Halloween pot and pan holders? Well, there are, okay. So here's one right here. And I um, don't know how practical that is. You can see the pattern on the back, like your typical one. Pot and pan holder. Little thing to hang it up with, of course. But here's one that better typifies some of the other member of the household who have a little attitude now and then, if I might be so bold as to say so, because that particular person is a little bit rebellious against their spouse, you know. But shh, don't tell anybody I said so. And so hear what she say, her sentiment on this pot and pan holder Halloween. She say, hey, dude, bite me, okay? So, bite me. <laughs> so, uh, you know, not going to take very much crap off of anybody, you know, at Halloween or at any other time, for that matter, you know. So, but you know, which of us would want to have a Stepford wife type spouse anyway? You know, you want someone with a strong personality. Hmm, wait a minute. Maybe a Stepford wife would be a lot easier after all when I think about it. Ah, never mind. Way off topic. I'm going to do an ASMR video sometime on um, counseling. And uh, I'm going to do a role play and be a therapeutic, a psychotherapeutic counselor. But uh, let's get back on topic. Look at some uh, candy and stuff. Oh, but before we look at the candy, I found the uh, flashlight I was looking for. Now I'm going to show you the little ghost again to look like the Stay Puff Marshmallow, but it's all lit up now. See, make it look more like it's got glowing eyes and mouths and things. A little bat front on it, okay. Just had to do that because uh, I would feel deprived if I didn't show you. So, the ghost flighting around. And as long as we get the flashlight going, I don't know what just crashed down there. Probably something very important. Uh, this looked like a witch's hat to me. It's a, all green and everything. Kind of, I don't know what happened to this thing, but anyway, I like the color. So I'm showing it to you, even though it has nothing to do with our topic. I don't think it does, unless it's a witch's cap. You know? Sort of have an angle. It's actually a leaf with a stem, and there's something on the end that broke off, I think. So anyway, that's that. Let's see what else. Let's go talk about the candy now. That's what I said I was going to talk about in the title of this video. So can you see the wolf back there? Yeah, now you can see him. Ooh, I have to do that really, really quiet. Won't be soothing otherwise, will it? Okay, hold on. All right, here we are back in a slightly subdued light. Yes, the light changed a little bit. Okay. Not your imagination or mine. So I've got the. What the heck is that? You found a hair curler in the. Uh, 
in the candy bowl. I'm glad we didn't accidentally give that to any of the little kids, you know. They would have been pretty disappointed. So, once again, here our bowl of candy, right here. Got left over. I'm banging into the um, Halloween sculpture over here. So, here's the bowl of candy. So, let's talk about the candy a little bit. As I'm rooting through it, trying not to eat any of it. Now, when I was a kid, okay, first we have these little Heath bars, okay? And I'm going to bore you a little bit and tell you a story from when I was a kid. I grew up down in Southern California, and I had a couple of friends uh, who were from Mexico, had immigrated, and not there very long yet. And um, back then, the way this was on the wrapper, had a great big H in front, and a great big H on the back, and then E-A-T in the middle. And they were learning English, right? And uh, he thought that it was spelling heat H bar. So he called them heat H bars. And ever since then, I can't help it. I have to call them heat H bars. Yes, I always remember that. And uh, Danny and Davey. Uh, my friends down there, Garcia, right? So, anyway, these heat H bars are some of my favorites because it's like an English toffee with chocolate on it. But I don't think I've ever read the ingredients. Let's see what it is, if I can read it. It contained milk. Almonds, soy, pardon me, had to edit out a sneeze of fall allergies. So, this contained milk chocolate, English toffee. It says, I like to freeze these things, the heat age bar. And uh, let's see if it's got, this says, not for individual retail sake. Let's hope not, because they're very small. You know? Every year, they make these individual candies a little bit smaller. So you got to put a bigger handful in the kid's bag, or they feel cheated, you know. So that's the rule. Of course, I talked to you a little bit already about the Whoppers. Now, when I was young, these things came in a row of uh, five. And uh, now there's only three in here, and they're smaller. Okay, the little individual baglets had five whoppers. So again, we're getting like screwed, you know. But anyway, they're still fun, you know. You mind if I have one? Would that be really, really rude? Let me see if I can. Got to use my teeth on it. No, I was able to open it. Okay. So. Let me show you how small these things are. That's what the Whopper looked like, like a tiny little pea pod or something. It used to be big, you know. You know, I don't crunch these, typically. I suck on them and the milk chocolate come right off. And then the malt inside just sort of melt in your mouth. Not in your hand, like an M&M. Hmm. I really like them but they're very addictive. Once you have one or two, then you want to have lots more little packets. That's the problem with these. Hmm. 
there it goes, melting away. Now we got to cleanse our palette. But I'm not going to have any more candy. I have to limit it to just a little bit. All right. Some people don't like ASMR videos that have anybody eating on them. Other people like that, and so we're all different. And that's what makes the ASMR community diverse, right? No judgmentalness. What else we got in here? Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Now I like these, but they taste like you're really getting this huge load of sugar and fat when you have one. So I try really not to ever eat them anymore. When I was younger, we would ride our bike, you know, down to the... This thing's all puffed up with air, too. Look at this. They didn't used to do this with these candy packs. Now they puff them up with air. Make it look bigger. I'm not even touching the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup inside which has shrunk, you know, compared to the way they used to be. Hmm. That's a new one on me. I feel like a balloon. So they're finding more and more clever ways to fool the consumer who's buying Halloween candy for kids. And I told you earlier Let's read the ingredients on the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, if I can, in this low light condition. Milk, chocolate, yeah, figure, sugar, cocoa butter, non-fat milk, milk, fat, lactose, uh-oh, if you're lactose intolerant, can't have this one. Soy lecithin and an emulsifier. Peanuts. Sugar. Didn't they say that already? Guess not. Yes, they did. Well, that was part of the milk chocolate. So they're listing it again for the peanut, peanutty part. Sugar. Dextrose. And salt. Well, there's at least there's not a lot of chemicals and things in it. But um, this has peanuts and soy. And um, what else did we see that people say they have trouble with lactose? So people that are lactose intolerant, soy intolerant, or peanut intolerant allergy aren't going to be able to have one of these, obviously. Do you ever notice that when you were, well, you don't because you're not as old as I am, but when, uh, when I was young, we didn't have in society things like uh, gluten-free food and peanut-free food and lactose intolerance and all that stuff. None of that seemed to exist then. Isn't it odd now that everybody's got something they can't have? And like, now you can't get a peanut butter sucker at uh, the C's candy store anymore, which was my favorite thing there, because it will cause somebody to have an allergy problem, right? Kind of a drag. What else do we have here? We have a little almond joy. You know, I kind of like these too, but I only like to have one or two of them at, a mo at most. Because again, they taste like they would be loaded with fat and sugar. 
coconut, you know, it's not the best thing for you unless you have the raw coconut oil. And that's supposed to be really good for some reason. And because this is on a dark blue wrapper, I don't think I can read the ingredients on it. Maybe you can read them if I hold it up close enough. I don't know. Can you read? Actually, maybe I can read it now. Oh yeah, I can. This has a... Uh, wow, how strange. I found a new way to read, okay? So we see it's got a whole bunch of different... If I can hold it right, it's all backwards to me, see? Something syrup, chocolate, sugar, cocoa butter, milk, more chocolate, lactose. It said cocoa butter again. Say it twice. Almonds, oh, roasted in cocoa butter. So you've got a whole bunch of things. And that one. And, uh, hey, somebody put an old wrapper back in here. No Reese peanut butter cups. And I can tell you it wasn't me, okay? But I think I know who did it. Yeah. I'm gonna do an investigation. Major research project. Uh, some detective work. Find out the culprit and tell them not to put empty wrapper back in the bowl. I like these big wooden bowls, you know. Big giant wooden bowls. You don't get to use them much. Maybe for a big salad. Or put Halloween candy in it. That's about it. So, there's a big bowl. All flipped over. I don't know what we're going to do with it. You know what we're going to do with this? I guess I'll do what I do every year. I'll hide three or four of them to eat later. Sort of like a squirrel does in the fall with a nut or an acorn. You know? I'll squirrel four or five of them away. Yes, I know I just said three or four, and I change it to four or five. So I'll squirrel like you know, six or seven of these away someplace. Then I'll take the rest of them to work. And I'll leave them out in the break room. You know? And in about 10 seconds after I leave that break room, they'll all be gone. Lots of people with a sweet tooth there in the rocket science business. Okay? So, you know what I have to eat because of, uh, you know, high blood sugar and stuff? If I want something sweet, like a little candy snack after lunch or something. I have to have this. Sugar free weathers, you know. They're actually pretty good, you know. And uh they only have like eight calories in them or something. Are they sugar free and um they're not bad, so like a caramel type thing. Um, but anyway, off topic. Well, I do kind of like the sound of the bag, you know, don't you? I have, so I'm going to console myself over not having very much candy. I'm going to take this bag to work. Two or three of these after orange each day. Oh look, they have a little window so you can look inside and see the little hard candies in there. See that little window? Right there. Get to get to see them. Wow, this thing has a lot of ingredients. It's so good. Let's see what they got in here. They got iso-malt. That's probably what I like the taste of. Butter. How can they put butter in this? 
that have it so low calorie. I guess because it's so small. We have one. Cream. So far, so good. No major preservative yet. Salt. Emulsifier. Soy. Lecithin. Lecithin's actually good for you. In small doses. Then they got the sweetener instead of sugar. Which in this case is, uh, look like aspartame. Or a variety of it. And it's a contains milk and soybeans as an allergy alert. See, like I told you, everyone has to do allergy alerts now on everything. Metal, gluten, peanut, you know, whatever. So I told you I was going to bore you with a story about doing Halloween candy when I was a kid. So I can't stop doing this until I bore you with my story. What we used to do, my uncle and I, he was a couple years older than me, and we were like eight year old, ten year old, right? Get these giant shopping bags, right? And we lived in Southern California back then. I don't live there now. I moved up here to the Central Coast area when I were about 12 years old with my parents. I wouldn't still be alive if I were down there because of the smog. But anyway, um, we would go around with these giant shopping bags and trick-or-treat in high-density areas like uh, apartment complexes and stuff. We had this down to a science. We would fill up a giant shopping bag, bring it back home, and then jam out to another neighborhood with another one. See, we were both really poor. Parent not ever buy us any candy, right? So, and, uh, so this was the only time we would get it. And um, so I think at the end of the evening, I'd have like three big brown shopping bags of candy. And then what I would do, I hope this is putting you to sleep. I would take all the candy and I would use the top of my desk and my entire floor of my room and I would start categorizing and separating it and organizing it and eventually I would have all of it segregated by type and size and favorite and the kind I wasn't going to do anything with, you know, the suckers. I didn't like suckers. And uh, to me, it felt like I had fallen into the mother road of gold and silver in the fat eye, you know, like all that candy. And uh, some kids, you know, gorge on it at Halloween. We didn't do that. My uncle and I are both the same in our habits. That candy would stay organized like that. I didn't even want to eat it because I was looking at it and going, that's so cool, you know. Look at that old array of all that candy. And so um, what I would do is have like a couple pieces a day. Stuff would be there for months. You know, I would just meter it out a little bit at a time. Good thing candy doesn't go bad too easy. You know. As long as we didn't get a terrible heat wave, but, you know, Halloween, just going into winter, so it's not all going to melt on you. We didn't have air conditioning. Except in one room in the house. 
bedroom, bath room, mom room. In the summer, heat wave, that room would be frigid and the rest of the house roasting hot. But one room had a you know, little window AC thing. So I'd go hang out back there and play games and read and stuff like that. So anyway, I'm going to take my favorite heat H bars. See? Heat H. I'm going to put those in the fridge. No, the freezer. And the rest of this stuff is going to work to get scarfed up by others. So I hope you've had a fun, safe, sane Halloween. Can you see the wolf? Yeah, there's the wolf. Ooh. And uh, we actually saw a wolf, a big gray wolf in the wild, not too long ago, up in Yosemite, but not down where all the people are. It was way up in the summit, Tioga Pass, okay. beautiful bluish gray coat. Haven't seen that ever in my life, so it was very exciting. Anyway, this candy is starting to tempt me a little bit. Not really much of a candy eater, but when you feel a little like comfort food, you know. I did a video on comfort food before I got my high def camera. So you might want to check that out if you like comfort food. ASMR. I mean, now, that make kind of a nice noise on the wooden bowl. Heat H bar on a wooden bowl. With a little candy wrapper in the background. Okay, so anyway, I'm really rambling tonight, aren't I? I usually move along at a better clip, but I'm kind of tired, and I'm hoping I'm making you tired, because that's kind of the whole point of ASMR, so far as I know. Certainly when I watch one, which I'm going to tonight, shall I tell you who my favorite ASMR In another video, I'll review some other artists. Because I have several I really like. Some well-known. Some a little more obscure. Right? I don't know what I did with the Whoppers that I opened. So now I got a Whopper pack down in there where I took one out and ate it. And if that ends up in the ones I give away at work, it's going to be already opened. And they're going to think I tried to do something to their candy. You know? Like, oh, a disgruntled employee left this here for us after putting poison in it or something. Some evil witch did this here. I do have a black hat on, but I promise you I'm not sinister in any way. So, uh, did I show you my... Yes, I did. I showed you everything. Well, not everything. I showed you about one-tenth of the decorations and artifacts in our house right now. But I don't want to spend hours trying to collect up the rest of it and take it down. I don't want to walk around with the camera. Because that won't be very soothing for you or for me. So, we'll be done for now. I hope this crinkling isn't too loud. Because I've been doing it through the whole video practically. And if it ends up really loud, I'm going to be upset. But, um,. Anyway, until next time.
don't ASMR and drive, okay? Just don't. Take care, everybody. Sleep well.